Hi everybody, welcome. I hope everyone is having a wonderful holiday season so far. In today's video, I am going to show you how I have made this adorable and cute 3D Christmas pug cake. I really love this cake because it looks like a little puppy who's playing in the snow. I just think it's so cute and I love it so much. Also, this video is in collaboration with my friend Talia from Talia's Cakes. She has made a beautiful ornament cake with a nativity scene and some beautiful lettering. So please go check out her video. I'll put the link down below. Also, at the very end of my video, I'm going to show you guys my own pug. She's so cute. It is her 16th Christmas. So please go check out the end of my video and you can go say hi to her. All right, let's get started. To begin this cake, I need to build a structure first. So what I have here is a 5 16 inch threaded rod, and I'm showing you that it's about six inches in length. I already have a nut on there and I'm adding a washer as well. This board is a piece of MDF. I used it for another project, which is why it has two holes drilled in it, but I only need this one that I'm pushing the rod through. And then I'm adding another washer, a lock washer, and another nut. You can use pliers or wrenches to tighten these. Just make sure they are super tight, just as tight as you can get it. My next nut is going onto the threaded rod and I'm leaving about a four inch gap between the board and this nut. And then I add the next washer. The board that I'm adding here is for the head. It's a piece of MDF and I'll leave a template for that down in the description box. And I finish this off by adding the final washer, lock washer and nut and then I tighten that up. Building a structure like this seems hard when you look at it, but after you get the hang of it and once you figure it out, it's actually pretty easy. Now that my structure is built, I'm going to get it covered in aluminum foil tape. I've already made a batch of my Swiss meringue buttercream frosting and I've added three teaspoons of peppermint flavoring and a couple handfuls of crushed candy canes. I really love this recipe, but actually my favorite minty type of buttercream frosting is my mint chocolate chip recipe and I will put that down in the description box too. For the body of my pug, I've baked a 12 by 18 by two inch cake and I'm cutting it into three strips that are six inches wide. For the body, you only need two of these strips of cake, and the last one is for the cake dough that we'll need for later. So don't eat that extra part just yet. The two strips will need torted, which I'm doing really quick here. Just run your knife right through the middle while turning your turntable. Next, I'm wiping some buttercream frosting on my board, and I begin layering up my cake and buttercream for the body. All right, once I have the layers into place, I'm going to begin the carving. Using my serrated knife, I'm rounding out the edges and carving out where the legs will be. Pugs are pretty thick, so I don't want to take off too much of the cake. For the head, I'm using six inch round cakes and I'm layering those up with buttercream. For the cake on the very top of his head, I left it domed rather than leveling it so they don't have to do as much carving. And then I begin carving the head into the shape of a pug's head. The front of his face is left flat just like a pug's real flat face. Next I'm making my pug's legs out of cake dough which I made by mixing my leftover cake with ganache or you could use buttercream frosting. I use the dough to form the legs, which I find easier than making them out of just cake. I did all four legs like this. And then I also added some around the neck and the chest to fill it out a little bit. I also added some to his back to make it look kind of wrinkly, just like a pug. Once I have the perfect shape of a pug, I'm going to completely cover him in chocolate ganache. Okay, so I've got the chocolate ganache all smoothed out, but before I can cover him in modeling chocolate, I need to spray it with water so that the modeling chocolate will adhere to the cake. And any water that gets sprayed on the board, I need to wipe that up so it, the modeling chocolate doesn't stick. What I have here is a sheet of modeling chocolate. I'm draping it over the head of the pug and I'm cutting it away as needed. 
The modeling chocolate that I'm using is called Choco Pan. I really love the texture of it and it smooths and blends so nicely. I'm using a plastic smoother to get out any imperfections, but if I were to do this again, I would have colored my modeling chocolate a light tan color rather than using all white so that later I don't have to do as much painting. All right, so I'm covering him completely in modeling chocolate. For this entire project, I bought three pounds of modeling chocolate and I had a little bit left over. I had a few sections that weren't blending well because my cake was cold. So I just barely touched it with my creme brulee torch just for a tiny little second. And that helped warm it up and I was able to smooth it out. Next, I'm pushing different tools into his back to enhance those wrinkles in his back and all around his body. Don't be afraid to mess it up a little because that is what makes it look realistic. And then I'm using my Dresden tool to scratch up the modeling chocolate to make it look like hair. Next up is his face, which is the part that I really enjoy. I've added a round piece of modeling chocolate to his face and I'm blending out those seams and using my tools to create the shape of his muzzle. And then I'm using my Dresden tool to carve out where I'd like his mouth. What I love about modeling chocolate is that you can add more and it will easily blend in and that is something you cannot do with regular fondant. Using my thumbs, I'm pushing holes into the cake for his eyes and then I kept adding more modeling chocolate wrinkles around his forehead and eyes. I actually messed around with this for a long time, adding the wrinkles and blending out the seams. It's just something that I really enjoy doing so I just had fun with it. For the ears, I've modeled two triangles and I'm sticking those onto the cake. If I were to do this again though, I would make these out of black modeling chocolate so I don't have to paint them later on. I have a tiny plastic tool that I'm poking into the cake to create little holes where the whiskers are and I'm scratching his face again to look like hair. For his eyes, I have two balls of modeling chocolate that I refrigerated so that they held their shape while I was pressing them into place. Once I had them in his face, I started painting them. I first used brown food color powder mixed with food grade alcohol, but it was smearing and not painting well even after a few coats, so I ended up using straight gel color to paint them. It was not the best choice because gel colors kind of smear and they don't dry fully. The reason why I picked that was because I was out of my regular sweet sticks in brown, so I was making do with what I had. For all the feet, I wanted to add better looking paws, so I'm pressing more modeling chocolate into the ends of the feet to create a more realistic looking paw. I think the front paws look really cute, but I did forget to make the claws. I can't believe I forgot that. One more thing on the eyes, which I did not show earlier, is the lower eyelid. For this, I added a small log of modeling chocolate under the eye, and then I blended it out using my dress and tool. Next up is the painting. I'm using a combination of colors and paints. The paint that I'm liking right now is called Sweet Sticks, which I said earlier, and but I was out of brown. So I was making do with regular gel colors, powdered colors, and the Sweet Sticks that I did have. And when I first started painting it, I thought that I had completely ruined it. It was streaky and it looked terrible. So I, what I did was I just stopped and I let it dry and then I came back and did another coat. And eventually it started coming together, but I was really, really worried at first. And if I had started with a tan modeling chocolate, like I said earlier, I would have had to do less painting and less worrying. It did turn out actually looking pretty cute though. So in the end, it did turn out and I'm pretty proud of how the painting looked. A couple more face details, I'm adding small white dots in his eyes and a nose, which I made out of modeling chocolate. Since this is a Christmas pug, I'm making him a jingle bell collar. To make the bells, I'm rolling a ball of modeling chocolate, and then I'm using a sharp modeling tool to create a T on one end. And then I use a plastic tool to create holes on the ends of the T. And then I push a toothpick onto the other end of the bell, and I lightly brush it with my Sweet Sticks gold paint. I made six bells in total. The antlers were pretty easy. I rolled out logs of modeling chocolate, and I pushed a lollipop stick into it. It's pretty simple. To attach the collar to the pug, I brushed some royal icing around the neck, and then I began sticking sour candy strips around his neck. Kids always love it when you put real candy on the cake and then they fight over who gets it. It's always funny. 
once I have the collar around his neck, I'm pushing the jingle bells into it and I'm using the bells to cover the seam of the candy strips. And next I'm pushing the antlers down into his head. To cover the board, I'm completely covering it in royal icing and then I'm sprinkling finely chopped coconut all over it. And I'm hot gluing a cute red ribbon around the base to cover that ugly board. And this is when my husband came in and said, the antlers do not look like they're on a headband. So then I added a strip to the top of the antlers. I'm finishing him off by sprinkling a little bit of powdered sugar all over him to make it look like he's all in the snow. And here he is, my adorable Christmas pug. He looks a little sad that he has to wear the antlers on his head. If you have made it this far through my video, thank you so much. This is my dog named Honey Bun, and this is going to be her 16th Christmas because she is 16 years old. <laughs> I hope you all have learned how to make your own pug cake, and I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas. Also, don't forget to go check out Talia's cake video, her beautiful ornament. And thank you all for being here, and I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>